today's video, we're gonna be lowering this Ram 1500, so let's get started. All right, guys, so here is the truck. If you guys have been following along for a little bit, picked this up not too long ago, and we've been doing a bunch of stuff. On the last video, we ended up putting these VLAN headlights. We've got 22-inch RT wheels on it, and we've been doing a bunch of tasteful mods. So check out those videos if you guys are new to the channel. Um, but what we're doing here is I actually started off making this video and then I slightly changed directions. So we're gonna put a lowering kit on this and right now it is the Belltech kit um, and it comes with the shocks. But I was going to just do a rear suspension install for you guys and separate it by front and rear, but I'm actually going to do everything at once. So what you'll see on the bench here, this is a used kit. Uh, a subscriber, Carl, actually hooked us up with this, so thanks to him. He took the stuff off his truck before he ended up selling it or trading it in, and uh, it's in really good shape, but one of the nice things is it comes with the relocation brackets for the rear, and that's going to play a factor into this in just a second. But anyways, we've got the Beltec shocks, which we will be upgrading here shortly as well uh, once we start getting to the track. We've got our rear lowering springs. We've got our pan hard relocation bracket it has a uh, sway bar end links uh, longer ones but this truck isn't equipped with rear sway bar so we don't have to worry about that and then for the front suspension we've got our two front springs and our two front shocks this is a two-wheel drive vehicle so if you have a four-wheel drive vehicle this is going to be a little bit different in the front end but the rear end will be similar um, so what I wanted to tell you about this is originally I was going to make a rear suspension video for you guys and I was going to install these relocation brackets, but these are illicit no cut brackets. So you can bolt these up, but you do have to drill some holes and this axle is only going to be in here for probably another week or two because we're going to be putting a completely different limited slip and built axle that's actually in here. So we put a fully built 355 Detroit True Track axle into this Eco Diesel, but it's really overkill for that. We did it because we were in a pinch and we needed to tow the trailer, but that's going to come out of there and it's going to go in here. But I'm just waiting for the Eco Diesel axle to get built because this one is an open diff. It's 321 gears. It's just not that desirable. And so rather than spending a bunch of time drilling holes and getting those brackets on this axle, this thing is gonna come out and it's gonna be a spare. So it uh, really makes no sense to waste all that extra time. I'll do the relocation bracket for you guys separately. So as you can see here, let's get straight into it. We've already got the wheels off. We've already got the vehicle on jack stands and the fender liners are removed. We've got them out on the ground. They're just held in by a series of eight mil screws. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove our shock and you can see here, once you get the axle hanging, like you can turn these springs almost there. It can almost come out. But as soon as we disconnect our shock, that's what's limiting our axle. So we've got supported by the jack, but as soon as we remove our shock bolt, this is gonna drop even further and allow our springs to come out. So you're gonna see we've got an upper shock bolt and our lower. So if we disconnect those, these shocks are coming out anyways. So let's get to it. All right, so I got the lower shock bolt loose and I took the nut off. And then the upper one is one that everybody seems to complain about. Here's the nut that goes on it. And for whatever reason, there's not like most of the tabs, like in the past, like on the Dakota that I have, they would put like a triangle on the nut so that it wouldn't spin around on the backside. But on these trucks, they did not. So a lot of guys have issues getting some sort of wrench or something on the backside in there to be able to hold it. But what I found works is if you get yourself a really small adjustable, like this guy, it works beautifully. So if you got that, you can see there, you get the small adjustable, you get it onto your nut and you can actually fit it back there. So if you're looking for an easy way without like chopping off the end of one of your wrenches or something, which I've, what I've seen other guys do, they'll go and get a cheap wrench and then just cut it off. Um, this is another easy solution. So let me go ahead, loosen our upper shock bolt. Okay, and as you can see right there, the wrench is just chilling right there, and we're taking our bolt out. So, if you guys are looking for a solution for that, there she is. Okay, so next up, we'll remove our lower shock bolt. Make sure you've got it suspended by a jack, and you can remove this. So you can see there, the shock is a little bit longer. Then you can take out your top bolt, and your shock will come out like so. So lower shock bolt is out, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna lower the jack and then the spring will be free. Okay, be careful not to go too, too low though because your brake line, you don't wanna be 
you know, compromising that. But as you can see here, our spring is all loose. So you can just tip it out and remove it. Same thing with this side. I'm gonna have to give it a little tug, but it'll come out and you can remove this side. So you're gonna need to remove the donut from the top of your spring and transfer it over to the Beltex and we can put them in. Okay, so next up what we're in here, we'll take out our stock bump stop and we'll replace it with the Beltec one. It's a little bit shorter. So just get it in here. And push it till it fully seats. Next up, take your spring. I would try to line it up with the previous indent. Put it in here and you can see it's significantly shorter. So we're gonna have to go up quite a bit with the jack. So let's bring it up a little bit and uh, we'll get this in place. Okay, so we're getting close. And while we're at it, we might as well get the other spring in place. That way it's not fighting us as well. All right, so same deal. We'll pull out this stock bump stop. We'll put in the Beltec one. We'll get our spring in place. We've got our isolator for the top. And now we can continue to go up. Next up, we can go ahead and get our shocks in here. The other reason why you want to use the ones provided or shorter shocks is because like you can see, they're actually preventing our spring from falling out. Because if you're driving down the road and you hit one of those big bumps where you kind of like, you know, lose gravity for a minute, technically your spring could fall out if you were running a big shock that wouldn't limit your axle from dropping down like you could see. So um, it's important to have shorter shocks installed as well. Okay, so I'm gonna finish taking out the shock here. Same thing, I've just got that adjustable wrench on the back, and it's holding the nut, so. I would recommend doing something like that if you uh, are looking for a way to hold it. So we'll grab our new shock, throw this in here, put the nut on, and then we'll get our lower bolts on here as well. Put the nut on there and we'll tighten down our hardware. Okay, so on both sides, our hardware for our shocks is all tight. Now we're gonna focus on the pan hard bar. So we're gonna take this bolt out and get the relocation bracket in. Okay, so I actually put the floor jack underneath the driver's side because if you find that your bolt has a ton of tension on it, um, it's because it's probably trying to push the axle one way or the other. So I found putting the jack floor jack underneath the driver's side helps to release the tension on the bar so that we can get it out without uh, too much headache. So now we'll go ahead and we'll get the relocation bracket up in there. Okay, so here we go with the relocation bracket. So it's gonna go in here like that. And then this is going to be down here afterwards. So essentially we're gonna be like this all said and done. So what we'll do is use the provided hardware. We're gonna go up through here and there is the bolt with the nut that goes up to here to hold the bracket on. We've got a spacer, collared spacer that goes in here. And we put our hardware through. I'll tighten everything up. So that's in place and we tighten down all that hardware. Okay, so the pan hard bar relocation is all in. All of our hardware is tight, so we're good to go there. Um, make sure all your hardware is tight. Everything's good to go, you guys. You can go ahead and reinstall your fender liners but I'm not going to because I'm actually going to clean out of here. So I'm kind of OCD with this stuff. So I would like to clean all the stuff out of here. So I'm going to leave them out for now because I'm going to clean it later. But you would be putting those in and you can put your wheels back on as well. And we'll move on to the front. Hey, I'm part of the Carolina Squatted Truck Club, Holmes. This is a sick look. Cannot wait to show all my friends. It looks so much better in the rear than it does in the front but this is how I like it. I think I'm just going to leave it. All right, so back is completed. Let's go ahead and work on the front. Front should be easier, I believe, because there's not as much to contend with. So let's go ahead, get the front in the air, pop the wheels off and get to work. All right, so I'm just here on the driver's side. I wanted to get all the tools out, uh, go through the steps and see if there was any steps that I could save you guys, because last time I did this, there was a couple steps that I thought might be um, not required. So I went ahead and just ran through this side so I could try to condense it as much as possible. But I wanted to quickly show you guys, we do have to replace these bump stops. Because this kit was used, 
the bump stops weren't included. So I ended up picking up a set, no big deal. But you have to remove the OEM bump stop cup because it will hit even if you take the rubber isolator out of here. It's the cup itself is going to end up hitting your control arm. So not a big deal though. There's a tack weld on this side and on that side. And what I try to do is try to nip it as close to the cup side as possible rather than the frame. And then you just get it and I kind of work the weld back and forth so that it snaps off and then you can clean things up. So as you can see there, we're not like digging into anything and I cut right here. So I'm just working this back and forth and then this will pop off. And then once you remove your cup like that, I'm gonna use one of these flap wheels, 36 grit, just to make quick work of the weld. They come in all sorts of different grit, but 36 is definitely gonna make quick work of this. And I just gonna smooth out my surfaces and then we'll hit it with some black paint. Okay, so there we go with everything cleaned up. We'll hit it with a little bit of black chassis paint and then we'll be good on that. Okay, so we just hit it with a little bit of black paint and I'm gonna go ahead and throw this side together and then I'll go on the other side and walk you guys step by step how to get this done. Okay guys, so we've got this side on and yes, yes, I know I'm going to be cleaning this. So <laughs> trust me, if you guys know me and have been following the channel for a while, you guys know I'll have all this stuff looking immaculate pretty soon. So I'm gonna pressure wash all this at some point here, but that time is not now. So we've got the spring in, our Beltec shock in, everything's in. Here's what the new bump stop looks like so that we actually, and you guys will see when we put this on the ground, I'll show you guys that if you were to maintain the original cup, you would have a bouncy ride because you would be riding on the bump stop. But anyways, this is all done. I ended up saving some steps. So let me move over to this side and show you guys exactly what you'll need. So I laid out all the tools we're gonna need a 21 wrench, a 18 mil wrench, a 17 mil wrench, and a 16. Uh, we're gonna need a 13 mil socket. We're also gonna need a seven millimeter socket, a nine millimeter, and all these numbers are gonna come into effect in a second. You guys may or may not need this, depending on what you use for the bump stop. So it's a nine sixteenths, and this fits on here so that we can tighten our bump stop. Pry bar, flat screwdriver, cut off, wheel, hammer, some black paint, uh, angle grinder, you could use a sawzall, but I find the angle grinder works a little better. And then of course we got the flap wheel on there to clean things up. So all that, and of course, make sure you wear proper safety equipment. I'm sure you guys know all that. And let's get to work. So first things first, we're gonna remove the caliper. So remove the 13 mil bolts that are holding this on. The other reason why we're gonna need the pry bar is these two slots pry your brake pad don't pry against the piston and retract the piston so you're prying against the brake pad so that you don't damage the actual piston and you're just pushing the pistons back with the brake pad so that you can actually remove the caliper so let's go ahead and do that so you need your 17 mil wrench to actually hold the slider pin from spinning so just use it right there and the 13 mil bolt will come out like so. So do that for the top and the bottom. And then with your pistons retracted, you can work the caliper off like so. And then you can either zip tie it or tie wrap it or hang it off to the side, or you can put it up over here and there's a nice ledge that it can sit on out of your way. So however you want to do that, and then next up, let's disconnect our ABS wire. So that's where you're gonna need the flat screwdriver. You're going to release the little locking tab there and then just kind of flip your fender liner out a little bit. And you can pull this down. There's gonna be a red locking tab. You're gonna release that, squeeze on the clip and then your ABS wire is free. So this is out of the way. Now with all that, we can go ahead and we're gonna loosen this, but we're gonna to have to support your lower control arm with the floor jack. Okay, so we're gonna use our 21 mil wrench and we're just gonna break this free. Sometimes you get lucky like I just did there and you don't have to actually separate the ball joint. Um, if, you, if it didn't just happen like you saw there, since there's a ton of pressure on it, it you know, just naturally came out. You can strike it with a hammer on the side once you loosen this nut and it should break the ball joint free. Or you can use a ball joint splitter, but sometimes the ball joint splitters tear the boots, so I try not to use them. So now, yeah, so now this is what I wanna show you. So when you go ahead and try to loosen this nut, you're seeing the ball joint splitting and you're maybe wondering how to 
loosen that. So what you're gonna use is a 10 mil. You can use a wrench, but it's quicker and easier if you use a ratchet. So take your ratchet, put it right here, and you can use our ratchet to hold the ball joint, and we're effectively loosening the nut. So one thing is the spring pressure is on this right now, so you wanna make sure it's supported with the floor jack. Let me show you guys that part. So don't go too far with your nut just yet, but that's how you get it loose. We do need to support this. Okay, so place the floor jack underneath your suspension. Make sure that the weight is off. And you're gonna see once you get the weight off, you should be able to see a gap between your control arm and your nut so that you know there's not weight on here. The other thing too is just before we take this out, let's drop our shock out because you wanna have maximum ground clearance to get the actual shock out because you have to feed it through the spring and out the bottom of the control arm. And if you don't have enough ground clearance, preferably if you did this on a lift, it would be you know a piece of cake, but with working on the floor, you have that interference of the ground trying to get the shock out. So we'll go ahead, we'll loosen our top nut here. And there's two 13 mil bolts on the bottom that hold the shock in. Okay, so we got our 18 mil wrench. We've got our nine millimeter socket. Same thing, as soon as you start turning it, the shock is gonna turn. What we're gonna do is same principle. We're gonna use a ratchet and a wrench. That way we can get this top nut off. So here we go. There's our 18 mil nut. You're also gonna have a washer and a rubber isolator. So remove those as well. Now we can take out our 13 mil bolts from the bottom. So once the 13 mil bolts are removed, you can try to slide this at the bottom. And we're probably gonna get into what I was mentioning to you guys about ground clearance. You kind of have to squeeze the dust shield or boot to get it through this hole, but it will come through. Okay, so let me show you guys what's up. So you guys can see here, my shock is hitting the ground. So you have two options. Either you raise the vehicle more, or you can play this game of trying to compress the shock so that you can actually make it short enough to be able to get it out of here like that. So you can see here it's returning back to its full length. So anyways, factory shock is out. We're getting one step closer. And pretty much the only thing is our sway bar end link and this, and then this thing can drop down. So we'll go ahead, grab our other wrench. We've got a 16 mil wrench. And then this weird size here, this is a seven millimeter. So we've got that, same thing, that'll hold it from spinning. So I'll remove this nut and disconnect our sway bar end link. So off comes the nut, our washer, and our rubber isolator. Now we're pretty much ready to get the spring out. So again, make sure that everything is supported with the jack, and now we can remove this nut. And it does look like the boot on this ball joint is torn, so looks like I'm gonna be into some ball joint replacements here soon. The ball joint's tight, but I guess the boot's just more Okay, so you can see here, I'm taking this off. If you still have a ton of tension on this nut, you need to apply more jack pressure because that means that this upper control arm is under the tension of the spring, which you don't want. So as you can see here, we're ready to go. Again, make sure your ABS wire, wherever it's hanging is out of the way. And we can go ahead and lower our jack. like so and then our spring is going to be accessible all right so you may have to get a little foot action in here but you'll be able to push down on your lower control arm and get the stock size spring out take off your isolator transfer it to the new spring and again make sure that you line up the coil with the existing indentation in it that way it settles quicker so before you go ahead and put your new spring in, um, I would suggest grinding the bump stop off now because it gives you more room to get in here. So go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna record it because I've burned up camera lenses like that, trying to have a camera showing you guys some exciting sparks, but there's a big weld here and here. You're gonna nip it with the cutoff wheel and then finish with 
your flat disc and then clean it up. Hit it with some paint and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so after cutting, grinding, we've got the cup off and that's what we're left with underneath. And there is a, you don't drill any holes, there is a hole right there. And that's where we're gonna install our bump stop. So that's gonna go in, we're gonna put the washer on and tighten it up through that hole. And there we are, the bump stop is in and tight. So now we can go ahead and move on to the spring. So you're gonna take your spring and pay attention to where the coil is on the bottom because there is a matching cup down here. So you wanna make sure that you get it into the same groove. So just make sure that you're getting it in there. Putting the new spring in is gonna be a lot easier because it's obviously gonna be shorter than the stock one. So like that, and now we're gonna start to use the jack to push it up. Just make sure that your sway bar end link is lined up. And then once we start getting closer to the upper ball joint as well. So we'll use the jack. And again, make sure that this is being fed in through there. And once this gets close, you can usually push it through and get the nut on here. Get a few threads at least. Get a few threads at least going. And I like to put my steering, you know, towards this way so that's a little bit easier. But now we can straighten it out and let's start putting everything on and tightening it down. So I'm gonna go ahead, put on my isolator, my washer, and my nut on the end link. We'll tighten this down. So we'll use the 16 and the seven. Next up, we'll use the 10 and the 21. We'll tighten down this upper ball joint here. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll get our shock put in through the bottom. One thing is you're gonna notice that there is a shield on it. For whatever reason, this shield is a little bit bigger than you're able to pass it through the bottom. If you wanted to, if you really wanted to run this, I'm sure you could probably put this inside the spring before you put the spring in, but I don't really, but to me, it doesn't bother me not having it on there, to be honest. If you do want to do it, just be aware of that because if you try to put this in, this cap here won't fit through. So I'm just going to go ahead, put it through without it. Chances are we're going to be changing these shocks out pretty soon here also. So the hardware on the shock is all tight. So next up we'll grab our caliper. We'll get it situated here. Put in our two 13 mil bolts, tighten them down. Okay, all the caliper bolts are tight. Now we'll go ahead and we'll grab our ABS sensor. We're gonna clip it back in to this little clip on the brake line. Then we're gonna clip it into this plastic clip on the upper control arm. And then we'll plug it back in to the body harness. And then you can clip it back into the fender liner. And that's all set. So double check everything, make sure everything's tight, and then we can throw our wheels back on. One other thing I wanted to show you guys is, not sure if this is brake dust or not, but it looks like some sort of deposits, but the bearings, this thing only has 50,000 miles on it, but listen. So there's no pads loaded in it. Definitely need some front wheel bearings. Okay, so this side is way better but still hear a little bit of ticking out of the bearings so time for a set of bearings front wheel bearings i mean the truck it's not so much mileage i think i think it's more just how old the truck is at this point so anyways i need two wheel bearings for this thing so we'll be doing that video shortly as well
Okay, you guys, I cannot express how happy I am with how this turned out. So this is the Beltec kit, two inches lower in the front, four inches lower in the rear. And I think it's perfect. I don't think there's any reason, at least for me, that I would wanna go any lower than this. This seems like a very good balance. If you do or don't know, those are the 22 inch RT factory wheels. So we got the factory size RT 22s on here, but I mean, I don't see why you would wanna go any lower. This is gonna be the best balance for us without going too crazy. And again, just to recap, the relocation brackets will change this. So this is the big gripe a lot of people have is the gap there compared to there is bigger. To me, it doesn't really bother me all that much, but more so than anything, you know, we want the geometry to be in spec and we don't want this thing to be vibrating or shaking going down the road. But overall, I think this looks fantastic. Comment down below what you guys think of this. Would you want it higher, lower? Do you guys like this look? Love to hear your feedback on this. So there you guys go. You can see the bump stops and the clearance between the two. And if you were to leave the cup in there with the actual original bump stop, you would be literally sitting on the rubber bump stop. So it would make your ride all bouncy. All right guys, so that's gonna be a wrap for this video. Again, super happy with how this all turned out. I'll link the products that we use down in the description below on getting this done. And I'll keep you guys updated as well as we get the relocation brackets and all that stuff in there. Plus we'll end up changing out some shocks and doing that as well. But if you guys are new to the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. Also give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. And if you're new as well, we are Hellcat swapping this along with a bunch of other stuff. We already have a Hellcat swap Dakota. So a lot of stuff to stick around for. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.